Hey guys, uh, I was very fortunate uh, to actually get uh, in touch with Mr. Chris Lee. He's actually part of the uh, the House of Representatives uh, in Hawaii. Uh, Mr. Lee, thank you so much for joining me today. There's a lot of questions people had for you, and I, I, I whittled it down to about six. So I think we'll, we'll have some uh, fun and see some more insight into what's currently going on with, I guess, gambling and stuff that, that is uh, in, in gaming now. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Lee, thank you for joining me. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yes, um, and uh, I, I did pick a lot of these questions from you guys. I asked on the YouTube community page, and I asked on Twitter, and I had quite a few responses. So we're going to start uh, with the first one here, uh, Mr. Lee. The big question everyone wanted to know, because they see you on their gaming websites, is uh, are you familiar with gaming? Have you uh, played any games or anything in, in your history, I guess? Uh, or are you playing any games now? That would seem to be the big one, because they see you, obviously, on Polygon, on Kotaku and stuff. Yeah, I uh, I go way back to my childhood and the earliest days of, of um, uh, kind of modern gaming as we know it, modern console gaming and PC gaming, and I've played virtually every major title I think that everybody's appreciated over the years. Um, right now, I've been playing, um, I've said this a couple times, I think, um, in particular, I've got an Oculus, which I've been really kind of experimenting with okay. as, as those games develop, but um, Pavlov VR, which is sort of like a Counter-Strike for, for VR, um, but currently um in the midst of starting to build a new pc to play hopefully um age of empires uh that's coming out soon the new the oh, new modern version yes yes as well as um yeah as well as the next uh battlefield probably and then um something else that i was just looking at that got me really excited um but let me put a pin in that and we'll come back to it as i remember black, uh, black ops 4 actually just got announced today New Call of Duty. So, um, oh, and, I haven't even seen that yet. Yeah, it just got announced. Uh, and oh, you picked a good time, by the way, to build a computer. I don't know if you've seen the GPU and RAM prices; they're pretty high. <laughs> um, but so if you're uh, if you're looking to build that, maybe wait a few months to get the GPU because uh, Nvidia will probably announce new ones that you can actually pre-order and get them for a fair price. Just throwing that out there. <laughs> yeah. um, Granted, the last time I did that, I ended up just buying an Asus. Um, right out of the box just because i got lazy at the end of it so yeah <laughs> uh, i gotta start ordering parts now or i'll never get there oh, okay all right that'll, that'll be fun that'll be fun to see you should uh actually put uh maybe put some stuff out about you trying to build your uh computer it was actually really fun to watch uh, terry cruz actually did that and it was actually very fun to watch someone uh learn and build one it was pretty fun um and uh would you be able to uh quickly get there people who are watching probably that uh get the general idea would you be able to quickly go over just, uh, I guess, the, the base idea of the bills that have been introduced now uh, surrounding the loot boxes and the gambling in games? Yeah, you know, of the entire uh, spectrum of what could be done when it comes to uh, loot boxes and those sorts of mechanisms, we've really focused on a couple of things. And that's, um, one, creating uh, some sort of response to the concerns being raised by mental health professionals and psychologists about the addictive nature that they can have, particularly when it comes to um, uh, kids growing up and that sort of thing. But also, of course, adults are a huge portion of the population and are sometimes equally vulnerable or susceptible to these sorts of things. So the least we could do um, in this standpoint is to say, all right, if you're under 21, just like the mechanisms that uh, people uh, fall victim to in casinos and things like that, uh, you ought to be protected from that um, and not being exploited by these kinds of um, really predatory sorts of mechanisms if you're not if you're not aware of what you're getting into so that's one bill that really creates sort of that age gate uh the second thing um is what we think is absolutely the bare minimum which should be um put in place for everybody is to create one disclosure that um games contain loot boxes and and those sorts of things so that whether you're a gamer and you're looking for something to to sink your next uh, paycheck into, or you just are a parent and you have kids and you want that sort of transparency so you know what is appropriate and what is not, uh, you can do that. The second thing, and this is the one that I think is probably um, one of the more critical pieces, is requiring um, drop rates to be disclosed. So yes. if you're going to buy into uh, a loot box or some sort of variable reward mechanism, you at least know what the odds are of winning something for your money. And that's something which obviously China and other places have looked at um, and and even when it comes to like casino gambling is um, long been uh, standard practice. So it's fair for consumers. It's fair for gamers. It's an obvious no brainer. We're thing looking to do. for transparency, basically, yeah, right? Tell ultimately. tell them tell them what they get when they buy the game, basically. <laughs> right. Right. 
Okay. Very good. Very good. Um, and uh, d- now, have you uh, have you been on YouTube and seen some of the? I guess the. Uh, uh, how much there has been now talking about the bills that you've proposed and everything. Do you do you pay attention to YouTube and some of the bigger names? There are some really big names out there uh, really pushing for this to all go into effect and really, I guess, more or less calling out the bigger companies trying to uh, make money any way they can. It's people like the Jim Sterlings, the Total Biscuits, the uh, Yang Ye, actually a big fan of him. He, I think he's very professional as much as he can be anyway with this. Are you aware of some of these bigger YouTubers that are kind of speaking out as well? Uh, I am. I, I can't follow um, every single uh, video that comes up, but from time to time, um, definitely check in. I think uh, it's important that that these sorts of discussions happen, you know, and, and without them, there was no ability to really keep the pressure up on the industry to change. So I really uh, take my hat off to you and to everybody else who are really making that possible to engage a whole new uh, generation of, of gamers to get involved and realize that, hey, collectively we can make a difference yeah we saw it with battlefront too so uh, right that's right that kind of uh i guess brings me into uh the next question we have here now the digital age is kind of taking over a lot of the i guess kind of the bills that have been proposed seem to focus very heavily on the physical brick and mortar retail store where we're putting stuff on packaging um to basically say this has a, a loot box in it uh, or some kind of gambling mechanism that is addictive in nature. But we're seeing a lot. Ubisoft, for example, had a big, uh, uh, basically, uh, presentation to their investors saying, uh, like, 80% of our money is coming from the digital front now, and we're slowly working away from retail. Is there going to be a way to regulate or to keep control of these games being sold digitally and maybe not even ever making it to stores? Are, are these bills going to be able to, I don't know if you can gate it off by IP address or something, uh, is there a way to, I guess, regulate that as well? Um, the, the short answer is, I think, yes. You know, we, we've seen the evolution of um, the industry. Obviously, you used to have to buy things in brick and mortar stores back in the day. And now you can almost never have to go at all. And so um, the, the the policies and regulations surrounding all that stuff inevitably will catch up. It's going to take time. It's certainly not there right now um, across the board. But uh, laws that are put in place, whether it's here or in other states or even in other countries, um, definitely have the the wiggle room to be able to say, uh, look, if you're selling stuff online, you're also um, uh, going to be required to be responsible so that if you're selling a product that, that needs to have, for example, um, disclosure on it uh, or some sort of um, transparency or even um, a, a rating of some sort, then you got to comply. And that's true in uh, so many other industries with so many other products, whether it's like um, you know, hygiene products, or food products, or, or other sorts of things you want to buy from Am- pretty much anything from Amazon. Um, in a lot of these cases, and in particular with food, we see it, different states require different labels and different kinds of things to happen. Um, so that's definitely not new to the industry. When you purchase something online, uh, now through an online platform, uh, especially whether it's Steam or like an app store, if it's mobile or something like that, um, we've already seen progress, right? Um, since we started this discussion, Apple has uh, taken the first step to change their policies to require disclosure yes. of uh, odds and things like that. Um, we know uh, already um, there's there's the broader conversation starting to happen at the ESA and within the ESRB about what they do for their next steps. Um, they say uh, clearly they're not done. This isn't the end. Um, but I think it is going to take the the rest of us to step up and say, okay, now follow through to make sure that this is something which is industry wide. Did you see, so, did you see the most recent, I guess, thing that the, the first step, I guess they've taken where they're going to put a label on everything that includes in-game yes. purchases, not, yeah. not just loot boxes. They seem to be right now um, taking the things that are gambling and kind of grouping it in with things that are just a straight purchase. Uh, and that, that I think a lot of people uh, can kind of see through that a bit as them just, just at least putting a label, but not necessarily saying there are gambling tendencies in this one, as opposed to, let's say Zelda, for example, gets DLC. Well, that's thrown in the same category with the exact same label as something like Battlefront 2. Um, and that, right. that raised a lot of concerns for, um, for people. You would be looking for a label specifically for games with gambling tendencies, correct? Generally speaking, yes. I, I think the response um, from the ESA was widely kind of panned um, uh, because it really hides the issue, you know, and, and there's really no more transparency there than putting a label on everything that said, hey, this box contains a game. 
like surprise, surprise. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> so I think the response from our colleagues is what's really interesting to watch because these are the folks in political circles who are watching uh, to see whether or not they need to take action based on what the industry is doing. And I think this was a missed opportunity for the industry to really actually do something meaningful, to respond to the community and to try and allay some of these concerns. And I think they clearly um, did not. So uh, there's definitely more to come that we're going to have to work on. Okay. And uh, so we know a lot of these companies, these are businesses that are trying to make money. Um, they seem to have found essentially a, a, a golden goose with these loot boxes. What we're mm-hmm. seeing with Battlefront 2 is very interesting. And this was probably the biggest question that was asked uh, in, on our community board, on YouTube, everything. What do we do about companies that release a game without loot boxes and then later because these are games as a service now which is what they like to define it as basically an ever-changing game it can be one thing now and then through tons of updates or patches can become a completely different game later so i think the concern a lot of people bringing up what if uh let's just i'm just going to throw out something like a battlefield what if that comes out no loot boxes when it comes out it bypasses that label and then three months later it shows up and there is now a a uh, uh, loot box in there. How would how would we go about kind of fixing that situation? Yeah, well, now that you're talking about Battlefield, you're starting to get close to my heart. Here. But, uh, <laughs> let's go with but, let's but, go with the so current I situation for Battlefront. Then let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think it, you you raise a good point, and this is something which we've heard from a lot of people about as well. And I think Battlefront's the perfect example, right? First, it was going to have something that it didn't, and then now it will again. In the meantime, people have been. Um, uh, buying the game and their expectations may be that it's not going to have these uh, microtransactions in the future. So if you're a parent especially, um, that's a concern. So one of the things that we did in these bills is to say um, uh, that uh, if a game is rated at its launch uh, to contain these mechanisms or not, you can't change that after the fact. you got to be transparent up front. Um, if it's going to contain them, then it can contain them. But you can't go in two months later and then do an update and suddenly add all kinds of different things. That's that's off limits. Okay. Have we have, you, have we considered uh, forcing them even to rewrite the game? Or because I don't even know how you would fix that then, because then some people already have the game bought under say a T for teen pretense. They put in gambling mechanisms. Mm-hmm. It jumps to twenty one and over. You know. So you're saying we pretty much have to lock them in. You're either doing loot boxes and putting a label on it, or there are yeah. no loot boxes. Yeah. So it would be the the, the the publishers in that point uh, would be in violation of the law if they then came back and added something in which their game wasn't previously rated for from the start. Okay, fair enough. That's pretty that's pretty cut and dry. So, uh, and yeah. uh, wh- I guess uh, two other things very quick. One, um, you see you're, you're mostly targeting, I guess, uh, some of these big games, these, these big AAA games that are showing up and, and getting as much money as they can from live services with games of chance, essentially. How do you view... I guess the uh, the free to play market on cell phones, for example, is this something that would also affect uh, that as well? Um, because there is no retail at all in that, and that, is, of course, goes through cell phones, and it's kind of difficult, I guess, to work through that. Now, for example, just as an example, uh, casino games where you can bet real money on your phone tend to be IP locked. So, for example, it's legal in New Jersey, which is uh, a couple miles north of me. For example, I'm in Maryland. It's not legal here. They actually block me from being able to do that. Is that, I guess, uh, something that would in turn be affected by these bills, for example, the, the I guess the phone free to play um, where they would stop people 21 and under, I guess, from, um, uh, I guess, being able to access it. Yeah, you know, so that's something that um, we know exists out there. It, it's been a topic of discussion in the past. Um, we want to be as least prescriptive as possible and trying to tell the industry how to do these things. We want to give them as much flexibility and, and creative license, but we also want to protect um, uh, especially vulnerable people from being exploited by the industry. So what we're doing is creating a set of guidelines that they have to abide by. So they can create um, either geographic or other age gates um, as they see appropriate based on these laws, but they do have to comply and ensure that they reach the end goal. That's something which has been enormously successful in other industries and allows the industry basically to, for the most part, self-regulate as long as it doesn't exploit people at the end of the day. Okay. Uh, I guess last question, uh, Mr. Lee, before I let you go. 
uh, it seems like there was a boiling point, almost where it, essentially everything exploded around Battlefront 2, to the point where they felt the need to pull back, and word is that Disney even got involved. Uh, was Battlefront 2 essentially the straw that broke the camel's back uh, for you even? Maybe you've been, a, have you been observing this loot box situation, these games of chance built into games for a while now, and it seems like this was the time to really attack it, I guess, it, it, because the ESA clearly, the ESA is created to self-regulate, basically so the government wouldn't have to, um, but in this case, they seem to have been kind of failed to do that uh, to the point where it's on CNN, it's on every big mainstream site. Yeah. Is this, did this just seem to be because the, like, the straw broke the camel's back and this was just time? Is that, uh, is that the situation or were you also kind of observing this for the past, I would say, year and a half? No, I think we've definitely been quietly observing and watching things unfold. I think um, Battlefront, just because of its scale and scope and, and its IP, definitely, I think, um, acted as a catalyst to drive the conversation and, and kind of probably accelerated things a little bit. But I do think it, it was inevitable that whether it was this game or the next game or who knows whatever came next, that this conversation happened because the industry continues to push and push and push those boundaries. And the community continues to um, be on the receiving end of, unfortunately, a lot of the, the side effects of that. To say nothing of the quality of the games that, that don't seem to be up to uh, par. Sure. So, <laughs> um, so I think we're now in a space where um, it was probably going to be this coming year that something uh, snapped. Um, but I think you're right. The battlefield was probably the first big catalyst for it. Battle, Battlefront too. Yeah, you got it. Yep. Um, yeah, Battlefront. Sorry. Yeah. Don't want to. Don't want Hopefully to throw battlefield. battlefield. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see how that goes. I guess should be out this yeah. year. Um, but uh, Mr. Lee, I really appreciate you taking the time to uh, to to answer questions that people had and everything. You also have a a YouTube channel. That I guess you started up just for updates. You posted the ESA. Uh, interview there and everything, which was very fascinating to watch. I, I don't think I've really ever seen lobbyists from the ESA show up um, and, and really talk about these kind of things. That was fascinating to see. So I will leave a link to your channel down in the description. Everyone should go there, check it out, uh, become educated on these topics, start a discussion online, and uh, that way we can come to some sort of solution, hopefully in the near future. Um, where everyone can essentially win, whether it's the companies being able to make money to stay in business, make more games, and the people get the full experience, or at least a very transparent experience going forward. Um, so absolutely, I appreciate that's, it, Mr. That's Lee. what we want. We just want a better industry. <laughs> yes. So thanks for having me. Absolutely, uh, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you check out uh, Mr. Lee's channel. It's down in the description, and I will see you guys next time.